Here's a fairly simple implementation of a stack, which I've written in Visual Basic.net. I've got a text box here called TXT New Data, where we can enter new data that we will then push onto the stack. This text box is called TXT Popped Data. Anything I take from the stack will be put into here. I've got a couple of buttons to launch, push and pop, and then this pile of text boxes here are simply to emulate the operation of my stack, which in actual fact will be an array variable. So let's just quickly see this in action. I'll run the program up. And as I push data onto the stack, you can see it piling up in the text boxes. There'll come a point where I try to push too much and my stack is full and my application tells me so. Popping, I'm taking data from the top of the stack and copying it into this text box here. So how does it work? Let's have a quick look at the code then. So as you saw in the algorithm, I've got an array variable, which is going to contain the data. I've got a constant defining the maximum size, and I've got a variable to indicate the top of the stack. Now in vb.net, all arrays are zero based. So this declaration here says I want an array of five elements. They'll be numbered from zero. So I've had to make a slight adjustment here. My initial value of top is minus one, minus one to indicate an empty stack. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same as the algorithm. This is my push operation. I check if top is equal to max size, report accordingly. If not, I can increment top and place my new data item from the text box on the form into that element of the array variable. This little block of code is to emulate the stack on the form. All I'm really doing is taking the new item of data and then assigning it to the appropriate text box on the form. This reads as txt stack and then whatever the value of itop is. For example, if it's the first item, it will go into txt stack zero. This is my pop operation. Again, fairly simple. If top is equal to minus one, the stack is empty. Otherwise, I can take data from the appropriate element of the array and do whatever it is I need to do with it. In this case, I'm simply putting it into another text box. And then to emulate the stack on the form, I'm just updating my little stack of text boxes. Then I decrement top. So that's a fairly simplistic way of doing it. I do have another approach as well. This time, I've used more of an object-oriented approach. I want you to notice here that I've got a class called stack. Same as before, I've declared an array variable, a max size, and a top. Because the push procedure is within a class, it's strictly speaking a method. And this method requires one parameter. So we pass the data that we want to push onto the stack to this method, which then assigns it to the appropriate element in the array variable. These two lines of code are emulating the stack on the form. I probably wouldn't see these inside a push method for a stack. This time, I've implemented the pop operation as a function. Here, I've declared a return value variable as string. I check if the stack is empty, and if so, I assign an appropriate message to that variable. Otherwise, I can take data from the appropriate position in the stack and assign that to the variable. Decrement the value of top and then return whatever it is I want to send back to the caller. So up here in my form, I'm instantiating a new stack object. I have a button which is calling the push method and I'm passing it the data I want to push onto the stack. These two lines of code are just cleaning up the form a little bit. 
my pop method is called by this button and you can see I'm calling pop and the return value from that method is being assigned to another text box on the form. Slightly different approach but this has benefits because if I was to put the class inside a dynamic link library and compile it then people would be able to use that class without concerning themselves with what's actually going on inside these methods. I can encapsulate the functionality, which of course is one of the benefits of object-oriented programming. So let's see this one in action. I'll just switch my startup form and run the code. And it works as before. But behind the scenes, it's a little bit different. And here I am popping items from the stack. Notice as well, and I'm not actually removing them from the text boxes now, just to create the impression that they're still there. All I'm doing is graying them out. If you're looking for a challenge, something you could do is create a, a little game that makes use of stacks. The classic example is a game known as Towers of Hanoi, which you can find out all about online.